did little pieces of gold lead to the first rules of electricity and why is it only half correct? What was correct and what was incorrect? Well, I'll tell you, and along the way, I'll tell you how static electricity works, why it doesn't work on humid days, and why it often flows away and confuses us. Ready? Let's go. Electricity, 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 electricity. In 1731, an Englishman named Stephen Gray published a series of letters in the Royal Society about how electricity conducts. It was almost universally ignored. Everyone was fascinated instead studying Newton's revolutionary ideas about gravity and forces at a distance. However, it was read by a 33-year-old wealthy nobleman named Charles Francois de Cisternay de Fay. Dufay came from a long line of diplomats and soldiers. In fact, he became a soldier at the tender age of 14, but retired early to follow his true love, which was science. When Dufay read that article from Stephen Gray that electricity could flow, Dufay wondered if every material could become electric. And we just didn't notice it because sometimes the electricity would flow into the ground. See, at the time, electric meant that small objects would be attracted to it if it was rubbed. People thought that metals weren't electrics because if you rub them, nothing would stick to them. Dufay thought maybe what was happening was when you rub them, you were creating an electric charge, but it just flowed through your hand and into the ground, so you never noticed it. Therefore, he rubbed a metal object without touching it with his bare hand and put it on an insulating stand, or a stand that would not let the electrical fire flow out. He used wax, I'm using cotton pot holder. This way, metal objects could attract feathers just like glass or wax could. In this manner, Dufay found that every solid object he played with would attract objects if it was rubbed. In other words, he determined that electricity is in all things, it's everywhere. Dufay then read all the literature available about electric forces, which didn't take long. He found that 65 years earlier, a German man named Otto von Goerke had found that after feathers were electrically attracted to a smelly ball of sulfur, the feathers would fall off and be repulsed by the ball. Dufay tried it with other less smelly objects and found that if he waited, all objects would electrically attract small objects and then after a time electrically repel the same objects. This is when Dufay started to play with little pieces of gold. You see, if they have the money, scientists love to experiment with gold. It is conductive, but also so malleable that you can pound it super thin and make it light, even lighter than feathers. Dufay, of course, had the money to play with gold. When he charged up his glass tube and put a piece of gold near it, the gold would jump up to the glass tube and then bounce off it and stick to the floor. Then it would jump back up to the tube. On a dry day, he could make the gold dance. This is where Dufay came up with his first simple principle about how electricity works, and we still think it is correct 280 years later. In his own words, electric bodies attract all those that are not so and repel them as soon as they become electric by contact with the electric body. In other words, the neutral feather or piece of gold or aluminum foil ball was attracted to the charged rod. When it touched the glass tube, it gets some of the charge and was repelled. Then when it touched the ground, it lost its charge and became neutral and could be attracted again. This explains why electrical experiments only work well on dry days. On humid days, the water droplets are attracted to the charged objects, and then once in contact, they gain some of the charge and are repelled. This happens with multiple water droplets until the charged object loses all of its charge and no electrical experiments can be conducted. Dufay had an ingenious method for validating his theory. He took two tubes and rubbed them separately. He then took a piece of gold foil and put it near one of his tubes and watched it be attracted and repelled. His theory was it was repelled because it took some of the charge. Therefore, he expected the gold foil to be repelled by the second tube. Instead, he was flabbergasted to see that the gold foil was attracted to the second tube instead, and then after a little while, repelled by the second tube and attracted to the first tube. You can see this process more easily, as well as cheaply, with feathers instead of gold foil. Notice that the feather is attracted to one tube 
and then is attracted to the second tube. Dufay decided that this was happening because the tubes were made of different materials. One was made of glass and the other of sealing wax. In other words, there's more than one type of electricity. He named one type of electricity vitreous electricity for glass-like, and one type resinous electricity for wax-like. After exhaustive experimentation, Dufay found that every object would fit neatly into one of these two categories. He also found that objects had the same charge they would repel and different charges they would attract. Dufay had created the basic law of electricity. Opposites attract, like repel, and charged objects attract neutral. That is completely correct. So what did he get wrong? Well, it's a subtle mistake, but an important one. Dufay thought he was creating electricity. He thought if you rub glass object, you were creating glass electricity. If you rub wax object, you were creating wax electricity. That isn't true. You're not creating electricity. You are moving electricity. When you rub a glass object with, say, your hand, the electrons are moving from your hand into the glass object, leaving the glass object with a negative charge and your hand with a positive charge. When he rubbed a wax object with his hand, the wax object lost electrons, leaving it with a positive charge and his hand with a negative charge. Electricity always has symmetry. However, because the electricity in your body very easily flows into the ground, it's sometimes hard to see that it has that symmetry. Dufay wrote 17 additional papers about electricity over the next five years. Who knows how many more he would have written if he hadn't died at age 41 in 1739 from smallpox. Now that the wealthy scientists had deemed electricity worthy of study, more and more people throughout Europe started to study electricity. The most influential, not to mention the most flamboyant, was a German wizard named Matthias Boza. Boza took the rigorous studies of Dufay and combined it with the static electricity machine of a man named Hawksby to make the most dramatic electrical experiments the world had ever seen. He actually started an electricity craze throughout Europe. And his story, not to mention his bad poetry, are next time on The Secret History of Electricity. Electricity, 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 electricity. Electricity. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and if you didn't like it, you were wrong. Have a good day.